I will always remember one of the first conversations I had with Larry from Shepherd's Song. I called them up and I said, Larry, do you have lamb neck? And he said, no. No, we're all out of lamb neck. And I said, why? He said, because the chefs buy them all. So that's kind of a little secret here, is lamb neck, which I have a beautiful one right here. I mean, just look at this thing. It's just, just really a thing of beauty. What I'm gonna do is take some garlic and cook it till it's really nice and toasty brown. A couple other things to go with it. One of them is a really cool spice blend that Shepherd Song turned me on to that is actually their spice blend. It's called Tavia. A little bit like Berberi spice, the Ethiopian spice. My secret tricks here is what I'm gonna do with this garlic. A little something that I learned from a man from Rome. So garlic, when you slice it, you get a wider surface area than if you're gonna mince it. And that wider surface area means that it can kind of withstand prolonged cooking, directly touching hot oil. But you cook the garlic nice and slow in plenty of oil. And what's gonna happen is that it is gonna kind of undergo this metamorphosis and it gets really firm and crispy and the flavor changes. It gets nutty and toasty and really, really punchy and strong. And it's just gonna be a really good base. So I can see the garlic start to brown a little bit. I'm gonna let it go, as we say, I'm gonna let it go to the brink. So that means I'm gonna turn the heat down to low. And I might even add a little bit more oil to the pan. Almost there. Right at the end, you gotta watch it really close. Okay, I'm calling it. The next thing, kind of trick that I have for really layering some good flavor is add your spice blend to the oil. So it can infuse in that oil. And we're just gonna add it right in with the garlic. We'll add about a tablespoon and a half. So all the layering, anything we add to the pan is gonna cool down the garlic and it's gonna keep helping that garlic hit the perfect kind of gradient of brown toasty color. And we'll just keep layering. Now we'll put some onions. And then the onions are gonna release water and that's really gonna kind of halt the garlic at that perfect moment. Now it's not gonna take on any more color with the water from the onions coming out. The lamb from Shepherd's Song and grass-fed lamb and goat is really a lot more mild. But another thing is, is the color. You can see it's just this super deep garnet. And when I'm looking at meat, when I see really, really rich red meat like that, to me, that tells me that they were eating really, really good. When my onions are wilted down, I'll take our lamb neck, which I have seasoned with a little salt, and I'm just gonna nestle that guy right in there. And we'll add I some roasted yellow and red peppers, which you wanna make sure that you roast them and take the skin off and a little bit of tomato. And a little bit of homemade stock. You can see that the lamb neck is kind of above all of the business here. And that's because it's got a spine in it. It's got a really big bone. But even with the lid on it, when you bake it, if it's exposed, you can still get, the meat can still kind of dry out sometimes. So we're gonna put a little parchment on it and then we're gonna put the lid on top of that and that's really going to ensure that everything stays moist and juicy and good. If you don't have parchment, you could put a leaf of cabbage on it. That would work great too. But I'm basically just gonna bring this guy up to a simmer and then I'm gonna put him in an oven. 
and then I'm gonna relax for a couple hours because that's basically all you gotta do. Okay, in the oven you go. So once the lamb neck is nice and tender and you can move the meat around when you hit it with a fork, you wanna take it out of the oven. And I like to use some gloves, especially if what you're working with is a little spicy, which in my opinion, this probably should be. You wear some gloves and then all you're gonna do is just pick the meat off the bone. I like to have it a little bit warmer than room temperature to kind of loosen the meat up. But you'll see that it really comes off quite easily. And you're not gonna need to do too much trimming at all. I just pick the meat into pieces and you're gonna have all these really kind of exciting parts little pieces of cartilage that have melted and just melt in your mouth. Then the next thing we're gonna do is just put it back in with the tomatoes and the peppers and the garlic and all the goodness that came off of that lamb neck braising in there and just reduce it until it thickens up a little bit and then it's time to eat. And when I was reading up on things that would go good with some sort of chunky pulled lamb neck ragu, I remembered injera. Just teff flour, a little water, sourdough starter, and it's kind of like a fermented crepe. They're really fun. Like a fermented crepe flatbread. Yeah, there's a nice one. Part of the fun of this one is it's kind of interactive and you don't need to use silverware. Spicy. You can taste the spices, heat, and then the juicy, falling apart lamb neck. sour flatbread. That's a lot of fun. <laughs>